Hello, this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. I like to talk with my hands. I like to talk with my hands. I am getting ready to go model for some artists. I think today I make $20 an hour. I wanted to do a video on wages in the United States of America. It's interesting that we call ourselves the United States of America. To me, that sounds good to say that we are united. We have 50 states that are united. The problem is, I think in some ways, we're not united. So I wish that we could have single payer nonprofit health care and unite in that and have more federal regulations that were fair and ethical to most citizens, to basically to all citizens, rich, poor, middle class could all benefit from increasing the federal minimum wage. I live in Seattle, Washington, and I made $7.50 an hour in 1994 when I worked at a Xerox place. I was a cashier and I worked the color copier and the laminator and the binder and the printers and all that machines. And I made $7.50 an hour. Apparently, I live in Washington State, which has the highest uh, minimum wage in the United States, which I think has been raised to $15 an hour. And I think there's a few other states in the USA who have recently raised their minimum wage to $15 an hour. What's really sad to me is that we don't have, like federal minimum wage, I just looked it up to make sure, it's $7.25 an hour. That is insane. Uh, there's no rent control in some states in the U.S. and there is in other states. I live in Seattle, Washington, USA, where there is no rent control, meaning a landlord can double and triple the rent whenever they feel like it. I think there's rules like 60 days notice or something, and there's loopholes. So if they're remodeling, they're allowed to really jack the rent up. So the point of this video is just to say that I'm so frustrated that the the wages in the United States are so low and the wealthy are getting wealthier and wealthier and wealthier. Their their wages are skyrocketing. I think the average CEO in the United States makes 300 times more the low-end workers do. Uh, I work as a freelance art model and medical model and I make between 15 and $25 an hour for artists, modeling for artists and I make $30 an hour modeling for medical students, meaning I pretend to be a patient. And that's pretty good wages, although I have to pay taxes on those myself because a lot of, some of the places where I model, they don't take taxes out. So it's my $30 an hour is really about, I think I pay 20% tax on that. So it's really about what is that, $24 an hour? I'm not really sure after taxes. $30 an hour goes basically down down 20%, whatever that is. What is that? Two, four, six. I think that that's $24 versus $30. And then if I make $15 or $25 an hour, it's 20% less than that. For some of the schools where I model do take taxes out and some don't. We have such a complicated system in the United States in terms of our income tax. Some of us get refund at the end of the year. Some of us get, uh, we have to pay. I had to pay $700 to the IRS this year. I made about seventeen or $18,000 uh, modeling. I luckily could afford that and I, because I save my money, I am a penny pincher, I shop at thrift stores, I drink mostly just water. Basically poverty is skyrocketing in the United States and thank God we do have food banks which is filled with free food that you can get that places will just throw in a dumpster so they donate it to food banks and then people line up all over the city of Seattle and get free food. I am a kind of a health food nut, so most of the food they have I can't even eat, but I stockpile it for friends and family, and I receive whatever free food that's nutritious enough for me to eat, and I eat it myself, and I shop at Costco and Trader Joe's and thrift stores again, and I have this amazing landlord that only charges me $850 for a one-bedroom apartment in the Central District of Seattle. 
which is really unheard of because most people, well, some people I know pay $1,300 a month for like 200 square feet, a tiny box. There's a place called Capitol Hill in Seattle, which is kind of a trendy neighborhood, and I live near there, and I used to love it there, but the rent is skyrocketing there. So I know people, the, the market rate is like $1,300 and $900 for a tiny box, but I am really lucky that I only pay $850 for like a 600 square foot one bedroom. I am, um, it's amazing. And my landlord said he makes enough of a profit and he knows he could charge more, but he likes to, to charge a more affordable rate because he has compassion and empathy for people who don't make tons of money. Because that's the thing, our minimum wage is so low I am very lucky that I make uh, between fifteen and thirty dollars an hour as an art and medical model. Uh, but the thing is, I don't get forty hours a week. See, I ha I'm a freelance person, and so my schedule is random. And I sometimes work at up to three art schools in one day, which means I have a twelve to fourteen hour day when you factor in commute time. So basically, I work really hard. I like, I love my work actually, and I do my artwork. And I put it on my website, shannonkringen.com. I'm just sharing with you what it's like to be an American. I'm 47, and I'm considered pretty low income. Made $18,000 last year, according to my income tax that I just did. Had to pay $700 in income tax. And uh, I'm okay, uh, but I'm really careful. And the thing is, is that the price of food and rent and gas is going up. But our wages in the United States are not going up. And this is really unfair. And they say they can't afford to raise it. So the United States of America, it would be nice if we were more united. Like if I was king of this land. I love Bernie Sanders, by the way, because of his ideas about money, his ideas about social justice, a prison, how prison could be nonprofit. Prison could be about rehabilitation. We should do away with the death penalty. And prisons should be more like the prisons in Germany, which are about rehabilitation and not about punishing people. Uh, I agree that healthcare should be nonprofit, single payer. I have friends in other countries. They already receive this. They never get big medical bills. In the United States, some women, I guess, get 30000 I never had kids, but I've heard some women in the United States get a $30,000 bill when they have to have a C-section. Uh, when they give birth. And in other countries, the bill for childbirth is zero. So you pay taxes and the taxes aren't even as high as they tell us. But there's a lot of lies being told basically to Americans about how socialized healthcare works in other countries. Not that it's perfect in any country. But I really don't think that a college education and um, healthcare should be about getting a huge bill. It shouldn't, they should not be for profit industries. Education and healthcare are a national service. So if I was king of the USA, I would say that healthcare should be non profit. We should dismantle what we have now. I'm low income, so I get free Obamacare, which I'm amazed by and I'm very grateful for. But if I made more money, then my healthcare costs would go way up. So I'm almost like my strategy for survival in the United States of America is to kind of stay a little bit low income, which is easy because I don't really know how to make more than about $2,000 a month. In fact, I don't even, I make about $1,500 a month probably. I don't even know how to make more than that. Uh, but if I did make more than I do now, then I would have to pay a large monthly fee for my health care, and then the student loan people would come after me. And that's a whole other story. But right now, I'm on... Um, low income deferred payments because I'm poor enough so that I can't really afford to pay like several hundred dollars a month for my uh, student loans. I, yeah. So there it is. So this is what it's like living in the United States of America. It's like, I wish that we would have a federal minimum wage that was about $15 an hour. And then if somebody wants to get paid more than that, then they can choose to pay their employees more than that. I think that the people that make 300 times more than minimum wage or more, their salary should be lowered. And the poor people and middle class people's salary should be increased. 
Maybe I sound like a communist, but I do feel I'm more of a socialist than a communist. Communism is a little too extreme for me. Democratic socialism, though, sounds better because that's about raising the wages, raising the minimum wage and the middle wage and lowering the people's wages that make like $3,000 an hour or $500 an hour or whatever. Does anybody really need to make millions and millions and millions of dollars? and to be able to hide them in offshore money accounts and hide, hoard, basically hoard the money. Healthcare should be nonprofit. Education should be nonprofit. Student loans should probably have like a 1% interest rate, not whatever it is, which is a lot higher than that. So it's kind of ridiculous, or maybe even no interest rate. I don't know, maybe it should be nonprofit, completely nonprofit. So, and I wish that we had solar panel, more solar panels and high-speed rail. Whenever I go to the United Kingdom, England, France, I've been to Scotland, England, France, Austria, Switzerland, uh, um, I've been to different, I've been to the Bahamas, I've been to Australia, I've been to Mexico, I've visited friends in different countries and I'm always so, in Norway, I'm always so amazed when I go to Europe especially and I see the beautiful trains. I mean, they really put a lot of money into their train system. And the United States is a beautiful country with 50 states, you know, 3,000 miles across and I don't know, 1,200 miles up and down and 3,000 miles across. It's a huge country. And we could have, we have a really crappy Amtrak train system. Amtrak trains are beautiful and they could be improved. We could have high-speed trains. I wish the United States of America would unite in terms of expanding solar power, get rid of fracking, increase solar power, and solar panels could be put all over the place on every building. Even on the top of cars, we could have solar panels and invest money into this and decrease the military industrial complex, break that up, decrease the salaries of the extremely wealthy, make them pay their fair share of taxes, stop this, hide the money in offshore, offshore accounts or whatever that's called, their stock market games or whatever. Basically make all people pay their fair share of taxes and raise the wages for the low end workers and have a national rail service. How cool would it be if you could take a high-speed train from Seattle to New York City? Because Seattle is on the top northwest uh, part. Los Angeles is down below. New York City is above. And Miami, Florida is down here. So how cool would it be if I could take a high-speed train from Seattle to New York City, you know, 3,000 miles or 3,500 miles away? Because in Europe, Maybe you can't go 3,000 miles because Europe, I know, is a lot smaller than the United States. But the thing is, they put a lot of money into their rail system in Europe. And it's, it's an amazing system. In different countries, like in the UK, it's kind of expensive to take a train around. And in other countries, it's, I think in Italy, it's less expensive generally. But at least there's rail. There's a lot of trains and there's a lot of buses. And also the buses, I've noticed in the UK, I took some public buses. They were really nice. Fixed up, nice. Also the water, we could fix the water. Then Flint, Michigan in the USA, we have water that's poisoning people because the pipes, I guess, are too old and they're leaking uh, toxic metals or toxic chemicals. I live in Seattle where there's really good natural water and I go to an artesian well and I get free water and I'm so grateful for that. So. I just wish that we would have a national rail system in the United States and I wish that all 50 states would join together and unite in funding, clean up the water system, fix the pipes, uh, put money, instead of the, all the money going to the military and to war and to Wall Street and to bailing out large corporations, we could help. We could also use dilapidated buildings to house homeless people. There's a lot of homeless people in the United States of America. It's really sad. We're such a rich country and most of the money gets hoarded by the wealthy and most of the money gets put into war and military type things. That's really sad to me. We could put money into solar power. We could help the veterans, the war veterans. I'm not a big fan of the military and war and violence, but I do feel that all the war veterans that are that have gone through combat and, and war situations should get the best health care possible. If we had a national nonprofit health care industry service, public service basically is what it is, because healthcare in the United States is treated like it's a 
a commercial thing that you buy and that we are customers. We are considered customers by insurance companies. And I think that's really sleazy and we should be considered patients. And it's a public service to get education, to receive education and to work hard and receive education and to, and to go to the doctor. So I wish that we could have national, I guess the constitution or the amendments would have to be changed. I don't know, but what can we do? I want Bernie Sanders to get into the White House, but let's face it, our system is probably rigged. I'm voting for Bernie no matter what. Um, long story. So I, I'm acting as if our system actually works the way it's supposed to work, but I don't really think it does. But I'm acting as if I want Bernie Sanders to get in the White House. I'm not a huge fan of Hillary Clinton because she seems more like a banker and a CEO and a businesswoman which is fine, but I wish that she would just go work in a bank somewhere. Just go work for Goldman Sachs. Go work for some multinational huge corporation that makes tons of money and go ahead and be a successful businesswoman and make a lot of money. That's great, but don't be a politician. I, f I know politicians have a bad reputation for being you know, all in it for the money. Bernie Sanders is not. He only made $200,000 last year, which for me is a lot. That's more than I make, but I made like 18000 But he made 200000 which is considered pretty low for a politician. Um, so politicians are supposed to be public servants, not business people that want to become wealthy. So I wish that we could have a politician like Bernie Sanders, maybe more Congress people, more senators and Congress people could be more in it for public service instead of becoming wealthy and hiding their money. I think it comes down to a fear of scarcity. These are some of my thoughts today. Today, what day is it? It is April. It's Sunday, April 17th, 2016. I'm Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. You can go to my website, shannonkringen.com. I wish we have national rail service. I wish that we had the United States. I wish would unite and provide their citizens with higher wages, with um, national mass transit, put more money into that, more solar panels, more community gardens, plant more trees, take better care of the earth, take better care of those less fortunate, the mentally ill, the handicapped. I read somewhere, what are the best countries to have a disability in? And the United States ranked extremely low because we hardly have any social services for people who are mentally ill or physically disabled. We have a very, very mean competitive system because they assume that you're cheating and that you just want to be lazy and not work. When you're disabled or um, if you have a medical issue or a mental issue, they assume, whoever the powers that be are, they assume that you're faking it and that you don't really need the help and you're just lazy. And it's really sad. We have a very mean competitive system in some ways. And I was reading about how much help people get in other countries when they're unemployed or they lost their job or they have a medical issue. In most other countries, there aren't any huge medical bills for citizens. And you pay into the system, you pay taxes into the system, and then you get benefits from it. And I've read recently articles of Americans who live part-time in Europe. And one guy said that him and his wife really only pay 31% tax. And I think they live in Sweden. And for that, they get really good health care and they get really good mass transit and they get um, their even their income tax form in, in Sweden, I think it is, comes in the mail and it's only four pages long and it's very simple and you just have to verify everything is correct and then sign it. Whereas in the United States, income tax is very complicated. I use TurboTax and I have all these weird deductions that I have to take for my business as an artist and a model and... Um, well, whatever. It's a long story, but things don't have to be so complicated. Our medical system could be totally improved. It could be nonprofit, single payer, national health care. We could have a better national transit. Like, I wish the United States would be more united in terms of raising the wages of the low end workers, decreasing the wages of the wealthy, mass transit, education, all these different topics. You know, Bernie Sanders, the movement of the Feel the Burn thing thingy Mick Jagger has really triggered a lot of more people to wake up to the fact that it's really not fair how they run this country. I mean, this country, the USA is run more like a corporation. You know, instead of a democratic country, it seems to be run like a corporation. 
So meaning it's all about the people at the top wanting to make a profit and become wealthy and hoard the money and then deprive the regular citizens of a better life. So in America it's very competitive and we all have to fight to survive because our wages are stagnating and the price of food and rent is going up. And so basically most Americans are getting more and more poor and poor and poor. We're getting poverty is skyrocketing. And the thing is, I don't even care that much about money. I just want food, shelter, and clothing. I don't, I've never wanted to be rich. My goal in life is not to be rich. My goal in life is to do my artwork and enjoy nature and plants and animals and do what I love and have positive relationships with people that I care about and share my art. And I love being online and having a website and a YouTube channel and a, a Flickr and a Twitter and a Facebook and a Instagram and my own website, ShannonKringen.com. So it's just, I wish that we had a more socialized democracy here instead of an extreme capitalism is very competitive and not very fair to the average person. And a more socialized democracy would help give citizens their basic rights for survival. And then if you want to be an entrepreneur and you're ambitious and make, you want to make a lot of money, you can still do that with a socialized democracy. So, yeah, socialized democracy would help basic things like food, shelter, clothing, healthcare, mass transit, things like that, a more a solid infrastructure, fix the water system. We act as if we can't afford to fix the water in Flint, Michigan. I mean, it might cost millions of dollars. And I've heard in California, their water system isn't so good either. In Seattle, I guess I'm lucky. We have pretty good water around here. Very lucky about that. It's not a very dry, it's a very moist place with lots of green and lots of rain. So, we could fix these things and make the average life of Americans better. And then again, the entrepreneurs and people who want to become wealthy and famous, they can still climb, you know, and be ambitious and do their thing. But the basic middle class, and also I think poverty, if we had less poverty in the United States, there'd be less crime. Because I know that some crime is committed because people are angry and they're tired of being poor and they think they have to lie, cheat, and steal to get ahead. And that's really sad. And so I feel like if we had health care and mass transit and rent control and higher wages, basically a lot of people would be better off in their basic life, food, shelter, clothing, basic necessities, healthcare, education, all of that would be met. And so people wouldn't be so angry and feeling like they need to become criminals and lie, cheat, and steal in order to get ahead and survive in this world. So I do think crime would go down if we didn't have such poverty in America and the USA, crime would probably go down. Probably. There are some crazy people that might do crazy things no matter what, but I think generally people are reasonable and generally if they have basic rights and they don't feel so angry about the system, then they probably would not be criminals. So that's my theory on that. So thank you for listening. Another long video. I'm Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. Thank you for listening to my ramble. Thank you. Go to my website, shannonkringa.com, and check out my artwork and my photos and my figure model photos and all kinds of cool art that I do. Thank you for listening. Bye.